Welcome to the Rebel Girl session on mental health awareness and coping with the pandemic. My name is Karthike Singh and I am the co-founder of Rebel Girls. Rebel Girls is a youth-led platform that aims to inspire children, both boys and girls, through interactions with extraordinary women. The rebels, the ones who have broken barriers and dared to achieve their dreams. The past one year has been a collection of uncertainty and unexpected events having a major impact on each of our lives, particularly our mental health. Now I would like to call on Nitya, the co-founder of Rebel Girls, to introduce the speaker for all of us. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our speaker, Megha Saksarya Vavadya. She is a family therapist and works with children also. She's the, she's the founder of the NGO, Triaco, Triaco that supports and provides therapy for economically weak families. So before we begin the session, a few rules I would like to remind you all about. Please keep yourself muted as long as you're not asking a question. If you wish to ask a question, type the question out in chat. And if you want to say something, please raise your hand to the option. And yeah, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, Nitya. Thank you for the introduction and thank you all of you for joining in on Saturday. Some of you have already started your summer break. Some of you are on the cusp of starting your summer break. So I know how precious these hours can be. And thank you for joining us for this very important topic today. Uh, I just want to ask to be excused for this noise of drilling you might hear. Unfortunately, this is pandemic and I cannot move out of where I am. And there is drilling happening right outside my window. So there's little I can do about this. But we're going to try to keep it out of our mind. So I've received a few questions from a whole lot of you. And um, I'm going to just deep dive in and we'll leave whatever needs to be unpacked about what I do and how I do more as the conversation goes along. So I've received a few questions from a whole lot of you. And um, of course, over this past year and then some, I have been working with a fair number of individuals who are in the age group of uh, the teenage space and the preteen space. And there's a whole lot of emotions that I have seen that are being churned during this period. So I was wondering if we would like to collectively create a Wordle. A Wordle is an image where each of us shares one word to establish what we're feeling right now and creates that image as a collective of this group. So uh, Dia, could I ask you to please share the first poll? So there is a link that uh, you will see in the chat box. And uh, if you guys could all click on that link, I have started the Wordle off and you can share a word that you feel right now during this pandemic, like a word that describes whatever it is you're feeling. I feel uncertainty. If you're having trouble with the poll, please let us know through the messages. There we have another response, scared, yeah. I think everybody needs to just copy the link which is sent in chat and paste it. On yeah. Google I think people are getting there. Yeah. Overwhelmed, annoyed, frustrated, alone, bored. Yeah. And some of us might be getting certain feelings seeing these words coming about on this wordle. And I want you to just hold that feeling because this is our collective feeling, the space that we're creating right now. And I promise you, we're going to learn for ways to move from here. So even if this starts to feel a little overwhelming, we're gonna work on it, yeah?
Okay. Great. So let's explore the words that we're seeing over here. We're seeing frustrated, we're seeing sad, worried, anxious, bored, scared, overwhelmed. I do see enthusiastic also. I see you hiding right there. It's there. And I'm glad I see that. But we're also feeling angry, annoyed, demotivated. And yes, there is a lot of sadness. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. This poll is full now. So we're going to move on to our presentation to explore what do we do with these feelings and where do we go from here? So Dia, can you take me into the presentation, please? So what we're going to try to unpack today is the exploring of hope in COVID times. Uh, I see uh, there are some hands raised. Can I request you to put your questions on the chat right now? so that uh, I'd be able to weave it into the presentation as and when it comes across. Um, while this pandemic has brought about all the feelings that we saw in the Wordle, we also know it has created certain possibilities for us. And I wanted to use our time right now to try to explore what those possibilities could be. Before we do that, I do want to acknowledge that talking about hope and possibility is not about taking away from grief or sadness or any of the difficult feelings that you might be feeling right now. Those have space and are valid and need to be given their due notice. What we're trying to do over here is any part of that hurt, grief, annoyance, upset, uncertainty that you're feeling, a small tiny rubble of that big feeling. Can we just try to move it from this mountain into another? And this other mountain where there doesn't seem to be enough safe space to create it or even traverse it. So together, maybe we can try to go slightly from here towards there. But I don't want you to feel that you have to move. You can do it slowly and at the pace you would like. So if you have a pen and paper around or if you would like to use your own computer notepad or someplace, the first question I would like to ask you to explore is what would you say the pandemic has made it possible for you to learn or do differently? Just take a couple of minutes and think about what do you think it has made possible for you? Was it about learning to be online? Was it about learning to make your own breakfast? Was it about learning to stay indoors and finding things to do to entertain yourself? Or so learning how to celebrate a birthday without having friends over? What do you think the learning could have been for you? Dia, can we move to the next slide, please? Now I'd like you to explore what do you value in this time away from normal? Actually, a good place for us to explore our uh, thoughts is our chat box. So I'd encourage you all to share what you all are thinking over here so we can maybe discuss each question as it is coming across. So I'm seeing learning to have patience, learning to use technology in a better and honest way. <laughs> I like that. Importance of physical health, spending more time with family, 
not t take anything for granted yes learning to maintain a routine cleanliness allowing ourselves to introspect and develop our talents and appreciate the luxuries of being able to step out of the house i love these answers simplicity yes now can we look at some of the things you did baking painting yes i learned how to crochet <laughs> helping mom making music cooking baking and reading novels sketching beautiful and these are some of the things that you have learned how to do learning to connect with people without them being physically present playing with toys being creative thank you thank you and i want you to notice with these learnings and these know-hows taking care of rabbits uh, with these learning and these know-hows that this really is the power of humanity that even in the midst of really the crappiest time our humanity has seen we're able to find such a long exhaustive list of things that we have learned to make literally making magic out of nothing leah can we move on to the next slide please now i want you to think who do you think might be noticing these things that you're doing do you think it could be yes your parents god for sure yes ourselves my dog yeah absolutely they notice my brain my mom do you think there could be a friend who would be noticing my best friend people on virtual platforms online competition yes there are all these platforms who are noticing we're noticing as a collective these things that you're doing and can we look at these people around us people including our dogs and it could even be you know i have this little doll frida kahlo that sits on my desk and i feel frida here notices a lot of things i do and we could all have these little things on our desk in our safe spaces where we think of safe cheerleading and these are our cheerleaders yes my toys they are next slide please so let's see now that we've explored new things we have learned people who've noticed it what might be the new skills that you might have developed technology skills yeah so i would say that baking painting art dancing these are things that you're doing but a skill would be maybe a uh, concentration patience being patient uh learning um what do you think could be the skills um for example strength or resilience perseverance yes i see per perseverance what else do you think could be the skills being supportive yes that's a skill being a listener being able to offer, of, offer emotional support and advice discipline ability to cope with stress absolutely being helpful gratitude concentration passionate beautiful being kind 
these are absolutely the kind of skills that we can develop and can we again see that even in this space these are becoming possible and these are really the stories of hope that we're creating within us being trustworthy dia could we move next now can we see how these skills these cheerleaders these hopes and values how are they being influenced into my life so i've we always when we look at hopes and values they're always getting created on ourselves our interaction based on ourselves and our interaction with the environment around us and can we see how this environment of the pandemic has influenced our hopes and values of life so a lot of people keep talking about when things go back to normal but can we see is there a possibility of the old world and, and i don't mean old world where we meet people etc but me as an individual who's developed new skills who's learned new things who's created this new set of cheerleaders and know hows about ourselves how do you think this might be changing my hopes and values of life which i want to hold on to i mean i'm not saying hold on to the mask yes we all want to get rid of the mask eventually but there are certain hopes and values that i want to carry forward into my new life for some of us it could mean a change of career that i've decided i want to do something completely different with my life for some of us it can be a way of adding a new habit a new practice uh, i've started the practice of yoga uh, which i didn't necessarily do as regularly before and i'd like to continue this as a hope and value of life sacrifice that's an interesting one shorya i'd love to hear more shorya and advet about why you would talk about sacrifice in how this could have influenced your hopes and values of life yes pratesh having time management that's an influence concentration that's an influence what else do you think could be an influence of your hopes and values yes absolutely focusing on physical health uh and yes alak alankrita priorities have changed i'm wondering if you would like to share what they could have changed to being helpful to myself that's a hope and value and did we always pay this much attention to ourselves before working on our concentration our value of friendship being happier absolutely so akshat saying i never did drawing but now i'm drawing every day and without it my day is not over yes that's a hope and value accepting the situations if we can notice these hopes and values are very different from skills or knowledge or any of the other things we've talked about what we're doing is going step by step deeper towards this mountain of the pandemic and picking out more and more like you know that digger truck and we're scooping things up scooping things up scooping things up and hopefully moving it into a preferred space speaking positively and correctly coming out stronger than before caring for family beautiful thank you and it's okay if some of these don't look so positive i just want to create space also for that because for some of us the positive is not necessarily shining through as much and that's also okay there's space for that too so it doesn't always have to look rosy and great it's great if it does but it's also okay if it doesn't because it means that we need to create space for that feeling yeah can we move on to the next one i'm sorry one second no worries while we're waiting for that let me see what else you'll have shared speaking positively correctly 
coming out stronger than before. Yes, we are hoping to come out stronger than before. Being grateful and accepting the situations. And isn't that an important one, acceptance? We keep learning, we need to fight, we need to change, we need to be in control. But sometimes it's also about sitting and waiting, waiting for things to pass, waiting for things to move, and sitting and drawing in that waiting. So lastly, the question I have for you is, how might this have added value to your life? And it's okay if you don't necessarily feel it. You can talk about what it took away. But can we try to notice how this entire journey might have added some value? Bonds formed as a result of the online platform? Absolutely. Join Kali and Elotna. Okay. According to all known laws of aviation, there's no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies because bees don't care. What human thinks it's impossible. Yellow, black, yellow, black. Yeah. Wow. These are skills we have learned due to the pandemic, yes. People got close online. Hi, sorry, we're getting just a bunch of non-stop, uh, uh, you know, different things coming on the chat message. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering where that's coming from. Myself. One second, I'm just trying to... Let's ignore the chat message right now while we're seeing the moderators figure this out. But I want you to maybe a few of you could unmute yourself and like to share how this might have added value to your life since we can't read the chat right now. You could raise your hand and uh, Karthik and Nitya, if I may ask your help to unmute people who raise their hand so they can share. We have three raised hands. Just unmute yourself and just say, hmm? not far. Uh, if, you're being, if you're being able to unmute yourself, just say. Okay, I'll ask people to be, unmute themselves. Us to unmute. Um, Shivam, we have you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. We have keep patience and uh, always been patience. And one day we will fight with the, the this virus and beat it up. And uh, we shall also learn that nothing is impossible. We shall uh, do anything. Anything in the world is possible. Uh, Thank you, Shivam. Absolutely, we will. Nil, Nilotma, would you like to share? Hello? Yeah. So, according to me, altruism is something that has been added to my life. So, this year, because uh, there were many people who were homeless and there were many people who did not have enough amenities in the lockdown, our school uh, actually went up with the idea of community services. Mm -hmm. So, we learned to be selfless this year and this selfless is something that has added value to, be, to my life. Being selfless is something that has 
you know worked wonders for me and i hope it continues to work wonders for you okay and while i have you talking about such an important one selfless it's such an important value for us to add what do you think selflessness has made possible for you in normally things which just feel so consuming and about me and selfish how do you think selfless has do you think selflessness has helped break selfishness uh, and self centeredness nilotma would you like to answer that can't hear you hello yeah. yeah actually i was not able to unmute myself uh, yes of course a uh, selfless this year has taught a lot of us many different things like though we were here at our home safe from the virus so but we were kind of selfish because we had stuff but uh, there were some people who did not have stuff so selfless here is actually it has broken that selfish part that you know having more for yourself because we have realized that though we were ha- we had food enough for three times there were people who were still on the roads who were traveling to their hometowns those laborers who did not have enough food so selfless and selfish i think they are i i just it's just my point of view it is synonymous so selfish it's like if you're being selfish to yourself you be, you're not being se- it's i'm not able to put it in white words but whatever you said it's that's what i'm trying to say completely understand if i'm a paraphrase for you there um if you don't mind i'd like to use privilege instead of selfish over there when we're talking about things that we have and the need or the mm-hmm. desire yeah. to share with more people around us and that's the journey from being self-centered or thinking about myself into yes, sharing ma'am. with more instead of hoarding yes shivam please answer yes ma'am we have to be selflessness with our uh, with uh, not by uh, our mind but we have to be selfless by our body mm-hmm. because it is co- corona virus is an communicable disease it transmits one people to another uh, in uh, by touching or by snoozing it is so we have not to be selfless by uh, our mind but we have to be self selfish by our bodies okay okay i understand what you're saying that we're looking at the fact that this is something that's affecting our body and we have to take better care of it and we have to take better care of people around us so that we can keep everyone safe um ab abha and abhay would you also like to share yes ma'am uh, in uh, this lockdown i have learned the importance of mental health and physical health and how it's important to stay on top of both your mental and physical yeah absolutely it is so important and you know many times we keep wondering did we ever need this skill before but the fact is the pandemic has only made this impossible for us to function without this skill but this is a skill we've needed always to be taking better care of our mental and physical bodies and hopefully this is a shift in a value that we're going to carry for a long time after us akshat would you also like to share that's another hand i'm seeing up yes ma'am good evening ma'am ma'am i would like to share ma'am that many families are been separated in my uh, relation in my family only um, my mother's friend father was in the hospital but uh, she cannot stay in the hospital as this is a communicable disease so the uh, feeling which was there it was very sad to look that patients will die and we cannot just take care of them and go near them yeah. uh, and also the dead body was not given to them also so yeah. what happened ma'am ki uh, the day when she came when my friend's father uh, when my mother's friend father was there my mother went to see uh, so no one is the was in the hospital as my uh, that whole family was in corona virus and somewhere uh, in yeah. ranchi and somewhere here in tata uh, so yeah. what happened that the 
one father that father's uh, one uh, daughter came to look after her, him but the yeah. other day uh, the doctors gave up the hand that oxygen is over and now we cannot just um, uh, we cannot just keep him and you can take him away so uh, after uh, all the charges given and then she, when she was taking him home uh, with a bus by a bus the uh, father just died in the way to the home yeah uh, in the bus only yeah. due to the uh, def, the uh, defle- uh, the co- uh, o2 oxygen was not able to reach him properly and the machines were not working properly yeah. due to which he died in the uh, way and just we the, that was very sad ma'am my mother was also crying that day because it's no just family are just separated and we cannot just do anything absolutely akshar and how did it make you feel akshar are you there I think we've lost Akshat. But I just want to take a few minutes to we talk about these feelings that have been brought up over here. And yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, it made me very sad, ma'am. I was also miss in the verge of crying, but I have to take care of my mother as my father was not there in home. Uh, he is working in. And what do you think? What do you think propelled you to move from your upset into supporting mom through her grief? Why do you think you did that? What do you think made it possible? What were the hopes and values that you were holding on to? To be doing that, ma'am, I was just being calm and accepted the truth. But my mother was not able to just accept it because uh, she has been with them and their family boy with many long time, and just uh, losing them with just no regret is very sad. Mm-hmm. and what you're talking about is really and 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 this applies to a lot of us here because we all have different kinds of experiences with grief in this period it's about noticing who around me needs to be supported who around me do i need to be taking care of right now and what do i need to do to try to make it a little better for them not because their grief is bigger than mine maybe it is maybe it is not because i'm finding hope inside me and hope is that one skill that when i share it multiplies it's not a skill actually it's this gift and it just multiplies and multiplies so i would like to also add that in that family a uh, one small child which was new born she was yeah. only uh, just uh, one month i think and she was also like uh, co- tested for positive and yeah. no one can go near her no one can feed her because her mother was with his uh, with her uh, father because father was also covid positive and the mother was looking after him yeah. Yeah. mother was not there father was not there at home and yeah. her grandmother grandfather both were positive so grandfather died due to this yeah. and the whole family was ma'am just separated thank you there. yes thank you akshat thank you for sharing with us the story and yes we need to make space for grief and stories like this and we need to see what we can do and provide in this space whether it is to the child whether it is to the father the mother the relative ourselves because some of us have been through that kind of isolation and might be feeling triggered by this story but we need to see how this entire exercise that we have done might be moving us from this feeling of helplessness into this feeling of something we can do something we have done dia can we move to the next slide the poll Yes, just I have to just activate it. Okay. So I want you to now we're going to go back to the poll. And I want you to think after this entire exercise we have done and 
what do you think the feelings that you're feeling now could be looking like? You can go back to that same link and you can start inputting your hope, fresh gathering. Optimistic, brief, yes, same, hopeless. Brief, empathy, happy, hope. Anxious. Isn't it beautiful to see these words just creating? We have a smiley face now. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. So with this exercise, where we have traveled from grief to hope, and we'll put both our slides, Dia is going to figure out how to do the putting of the slides next to each other. Dia, you can stop sharing your screen. And now I'd like to invite you all for any questions that you might have. All right, ma'am. So we have a lot of students with a lot of questions. So we'll try to take as many questions as possible. But yeah, so the first question we have is from Div. So Div, if you want to unmute and ask your question. Yeah. Um, if we're going through like a mental breakdown or we're about to rage, how can I prevent that from happening? Because I am very short tempered and tell me, Dev, what do you think makes that rage come? Think of the rage as a monster or a cloud that comes and overtakes your feelings at that point. And it's about noticing what do you think makes it come? Is it the time of the day? Is it a maths homework that you've been asked to do? Is it hunger? It's actually about noticing because rage isn't really a problem. Rage is one of the warriors, a protector that we have. And it's protecting something else, a need, a desire, a vulnerability. So every time you see rage coming, just try to look behind rage and see, hmm, what are you protecting? And then see, what do you think becomes visible then? Yeah? Sometimes it also looks like helplessness. And it's okay to feel that. But it's important to notice what I'm feeling behind rage. Yes, Karthik. Yeah, so the next question we have is from um, Anika. Anika Gupta, if you're in the meeting. Oh, uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, so my question is, how do I deal with the fear and anxiety about loved ones in my life who are at greater risk during the pandemic? This is a very stressful time. And my grandparents are older and they're at more risk during the pandemic. So how do I cope up with the anxiety? Muted. Sorry. So Anika, let me correct 
uh, repeat if I've understood it correctly. Uh, you're saying how do you cope with the anxiety of uh, what you're feeling about safety of your family members? Am I right? Anika? You're on mute. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. That was so okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's what yeah. I'm on. And yes, that's a tough one. A lot of us are feeling that because we're living with various people with various vulnerabilities around us. And we're constantly feeling, what can I do to take care of them? And the reality is we are doing our best. And every time, whether we need to stay indoors, whether we need to step out, it's about asking myself, am I doing my best? And if I'm doing my best, I'm in a position to be able to accept that if something weren't to happen in the way I would like it to, I still did my best. We're not in a position to control this virus. Yes, we can control our movements, but only to a degree. Some of us might have jobs that require us to step out. Some of us might have to go and give board exams, which are not getting cancelled or changed, or might have to be going somewhere for some reason. But Am I taking the care that I need to take care of based on the information that has been provided to me because we're all learning individuals is really the only solution we have towards the anxiety. Anxiety is this feeling of helplessness and knowing what I need to do is this feeling of control. So I need to create strength in this feeling of control that I'm doing the best I can so that I'm able to counter this weakness and this feeling of anxiety. Yeah, Anika, I hope I've answered your question. Karthik, would you like to share the next? Yeah. So the next um, person we have for the question is Alankita. If you're in the meeting, just ask your question. Um, Alankita, is she in the meeting? She's not being able to unmute one second. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I wanted to ask that, you know, during the pandemic, our times and screens have increased majorly due to school assignments, classes, and even all social interactions being online. Yeah. Um, but what I've seen is that parents often don't understand why we're spending so long on our screens, why this social interaction is so important to us. And that definitely... Um, has a negative impact on our mental health because we feel misunderstood. Um, so how do you think we can take steps to combat it? Yeah. And that's a really, really relevant question you asked, Alankrita, because parents are many times reacting. I mean, let, let's take me, for example, as a parent coach and a family therapist, literally a month before pandemic, I was going blue in my face saying, control your children's online time. Please monitor what they're doing online. This is not safe. And within a month, <laughs> schools are going online. Everything is online. And we're saying, log in and don't be isolated because you have the computer. So yes, the messaging hasn't fully gone to everybody. And what we really need to learn to do is distinguish between different types of screen time. So it's not just all screen time is evil. It's about looking at screen time as different types of it. And maybe you can be the person who helps engage in this conversation with your family where there is a set of screen time which is for interaction. So when you're on a Zoom call with a friend, when you're uh, playing Kahoot with a friend or whatever it is that you guys are playing. Um, these are interactive uh, sessions on your computer, which are replacing what you would be doing in person. So whether it was being at a friend's house for a play date, whether it was a hangout, whether it was whatever physically you would have done is being replaced into the online space. Then you have this other kind of screen time, which is gaming, which is uh, watching television or movies or YouTube or whatever it is that we're consuming as our media. And that's a second type of screen time, which is, of course, the one we need to be in better control of and try to turn down. 
unfortunately it's also sometimes feels like the only entertainment available to us but we need to explore is it and what can we do so a good conversation to have with your parents is maybe to look at a breakup of the kind of time you're spending online and then you of course have the third type of screen time which is related to school that i'm doing this so communication and sharing and talking about it by breaking it into these pockets makes it easier so a lot of your phones if you see yours or your parents phone when you look at the screen time report it breaks it up social media productive uh browsing different different uh things that one uses the phone so it's not about just the phone or just the computer it's about how we're using with and let's try to be more honest at looking at our different ways of engaging with our screens yeah? and that can look like a healthy conversation at home i hope that answered your question for a very difficult conversation today at dinner <laughs> um the next question we have is from naisha so naisha if you want to ask your question yeah um i'll keep my uh, is it fine if i keep my video off while i'm asking the question absolutely naisha okay so um my question is that since we all are learning online now and we have so many classes and um activities online um we can't spend time with our friends um sometimes we just can't spend time with our friends and i really miss meeting them so my question is how do we manage our calendar and yet have fun with our friends yes absolutely and what do you think naisha can be done to manage the calendar that's that's a question that's a little hard for me to directly answer but more about have you spent any time looking at this entire gamut of things you have from your school time and your activities and all these things and see which of these can be reduced or which of these can be dropped because let's not try to put spending time with friends as an optional or as something that's um of a lesser priority it isn't it is of extreme priority and the moment we take it into the center that this is important and this is a priority just like you saw the wordle what did it do every time a new word came or a word was repeated and it needed to make it bigger it made space for more things so we also need to look at our day and try to make space for more things because they are a priority because they are important so yes your friendships are a priority so even if it means that i finish my homework a little early or i wake up a little earlier to do some of my work i looking at my day and seeing how i shuffle things around will really help me take that need center stage because yes your friendships are important for you I hope that helped, Naisha. Think of the wordle and see how to reshuffle your day. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the next question we have is from Shonak, and then we'll take Shushti, Anya, and Divyansh. Okay. Go, Shonak. Ah, uh, hi, ma'am. Hi. Um, just a second. Ah, uh, ma'am, is it also okay if I uh, don't turn on my video? Absolutely, you don't need my permission. Okay, thank you, uh, ma'am. So during the pandemic, it's not just the uh, ma'am. While at the initial times, you were given the opportunity to, as many people say, to introspect, develop our talents, and the fact is that we have been faced with a variety of distress, distressing information. Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, there has obviously been the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, but there's also been um, other natural disasters. There has been most Absolutely. recently the conflict. Yes. Um, israel palestinian conflict ma'am and then okay. how um, how do you think this has had an impact on our overall mental health and could you suggest a few ways to maybe develop a sort of coping mechanism to yeah. deal with this rapid and flow of bad news yeah thank you shona um yes the world hasn't stopped <laughs> 
so we've had all sorts of we, we, we've had armed conflict we've had natural disasters we've had financial pitfalls we've had fortunes being made we've had all sorts of things continuing to happen while the pandemic has been raging this world apart right tearing it apart while it's raging and many times it might feel just a little too overwhelming that what 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 why why aren't things slowing down why is everything spinning so out of control and i want you to go back to the questions that we explored today uh every time hopelessness comes knocking on the door uh sometimes you might just tell hopelessness i'm sorry i don't have time for you and let them go away from the door sometimes you might have to make way for hopelessness and let them sit in your living room and it's about deciding how am i going to engage with hopelessness do i want to sit with hopelessness right now because right now that feels comfortable right now i want to feel bad because it is bad or sometimes it's about you know what i want to bring hope in front of hopelessness i want to show hopelessness that no there are values there are no hows there are skills that i've developed and i i'm going to get over this and i'm going to be better than that so we need to make room for these feelings when they come but we also need to know that we don't have to be in that particular mode alone we have the dexterity and the ability to move think of it like a jungle gym and uh, dia could you please share the two wordles that we did the screen i want you to notice this that in this session today we have been able to move from the wordle showing frustrated and sad on top into it moving into happy and hope on top and yes there are words which filter between one to another and leak in and out but this is the possibility we are creating and this is what we want to hold on to when hopelessness comes knocking yeah i hope that answered your question a little bit shonak thank you ma'am um the next question we have is from srishti if srishti is in the meeting you can ask yeah. your question dia you can stop sharing thank you uh, hi ma'am uh, ma'am my question was that how can we grow from this experience of disturbing information coming in during the pandemic yeah like we get several bad news during the pandemic so how do we cope up with it yeah and that's the exercise we've done that's exactly what we've been doing have you seen how you grew from the first wordle to the next and we didn't really do anything we just looked at what you have been doing it's about noticing that every day of the pandemic you an individual has grown has flourished has found ways to cope and sometimes just waking up in the morning looks like flourishing and it is okay so it's not about how can you it's about recognizing how you already are because you are and what we've done today is proof of it thank you shrishti thank you ma'am um the next question is from anya so if anya is in the meeting you can ask your question um yeah hi ma'am so hi, ma um, when we have nothing productive to do our mind often wanders off in different places and it's not exactly easy for us to have control over it so how do we stop this and inculcate self care in our daily lives hmm. so what do you think anya i'm going to bring this home to you what do you think self care for you is looking like please go back to the question we asked and i asked you what do you think you might be doing differently and some of you talked about painting singing baking and those are actually acts of self care that you have brought into your life to help cope with the wandering because when the mind so earlier someone had asked about anger and i said it's coming to protect something and a wandering yeah, mind is coming to say change the channel <laughs> so you need to change this thing that you're doing do something slightly different get 
some joy out of it so that you can come back and concentrate on it. So yeah, we've created this collective and, and uh, um, we're, you, you all have access to this chat where all of you all have shared these beautiful suggestions. So I'd ask you to look and explore what does changing the channel look like for you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. The next question is from Divyansh and then we'll take Manishka. Can't hear you, Devyansh. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yes, uh, apologies for that. Uh, Ma'am, so I just had a simple question. Uh, so, and we have uh, talked about that. Basically, what exercises or activities would you recommend as a counselor for a family to be engaged as a unit, considering how bleak and demotivating these times are? And while we have talked about how the lockdown has made us come closer, many people might argue that while we may be physically close, we've only drifted apart. So what can you, what would you recommend to keep a family going in such times? Divyansh, you've touched upon a very, very important topic. <laughs> and I'm wondering if I have enough time to explore it in the depth I would like to. But uh, yes, that is such a keen observation that while physically it has brought families close in the same vicinity, it hasn't necessarily brought them closer together. And I want each of you to reflect into your own family and notice why is it happening. Uh, a lot of our families and all of a lot of us in general have a very uncomfortable relationship with respect, uh, respecting people in the family, not just about respecting old elder people or elder people respecting younger people. It's about everybody respecting everybody that is there in a household. And when we see a house of people who should be loving each other or are a family, not able to experience the togetherness, what we tend to see is respect coming in the way of it. So I'm going to ask you as the torchbearers of this respect, what do you think you could do in your house differently to respect somebody that you haven't necessarily respected till now? It could look like letting your dog bark a little more because he's really upset. He's not been able to go out and he needs to go out. It could be not getting irritated by your younger sibling because he's come and messed up your uh, stationery. It could mean saying thank you to whoever's cooking your food, whether it's mom or dad or your household staff, and saying, noticing what they are doing so that you can bring respect into the conversation through that. And as we start creating this environment of respect, we automatically start creating a desire to want to actually be with each other. Because I could very well sit and tell you, oh, come on, play a game, watch a movie together. But till I don't address the elephant in the room, which is respect. And I'm going back to that statement, that question one of you asked that, you know, parents are upset that we're always on the screen. And again, what's coming in the way there is respect. That are we respecting our need for connection and friendship? But are we also respecting our parents' concern and fear? That am I spending too much time doing mindless things online? Because I'm telling you honestly, there are enough times that I could be telling, I mean, my daughter's on this call. <laughs> and I'm going to have to answer to her. But I could be scrolling mindlessly on my phone and say, oh, I'm working. <laughs> I'm not. I'm mindlessly browsing. But we don't realize how often we end up lying to ourselves, let alone those around us. And that's when respect starts 
chipping away at what we have. I hope Divyansh have done some justice to your very important question. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the next person we have a question from is Manishika. If Manishika is in the meeting, you can ask her. Um, ma'am, ma'am, what would you suggest to the students who are uncertain about their exams in Kajura? You know, um, we've just had a storm and uh, we've also heard about this tragedy of a barge which hasn't been able to survive the storm. I don't know how many of you all have followed it. And I want to bring the example of a captain of a ship into this conversation. A captain of a ship, when they set out to sail, they know exactly where they need to go. They know in three days they're going to reach this point and they chart it, right, based on your magnetic polarity and whatnot. And they know on day five I'm going to reach uh, Navashiva port or wherever it is that they're reaching. Then comes a storm. Now they're not thinking about, oh, no, it's day five I'm supposed to reach Navashiva. They have changed the plan and they're focusing on what's in front of them. That's where we are. We're in a pandemic. We're in the middle of a storm. Instead of constantly worrying about tomorrow, we need to bring our focus closer to what is in my control today. Exam schedules are changing. Exams are going to happen, not going to happen is changing. My ability to learn with online medium versus the way I learned in physical medium is being challenged. Educators know that. People around the world know what the impact of this could be in students around us. So instead of constantly worrying about these, this day five of schedule I had, and then I was going to be in Bombay. So I had a plan to meet my friend for dinner on day six. I'm in the middle of a storm. I just need to survive. So right now, do what you can to survive. That's it whether it looks like joyfulness, whether it looks like studying, whether it looks like sleeping. But right now, we need to survive and thrive. Future, we'll worry about on day five when we've reached port. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Manishka. The next question is from Hia. So if Hia, you're in the meeting, you can ask your question now. Right. Um. Right, am I audible now? Um, yeah. uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am, for addressing and having such an important conversation with all of us today. So uh, my question for you is, during times like these, when we see everyone around us struggling to almost such an extent that we could never imagine ourselves in their shoes, what would you recommend for people who feel a sense of guilt when they focus on their own problems instead of sort of trying to help others who are going through more difficult circumstances? To what extent do we truly have the right to fret, fret or fuss about our own issue? Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, you guys are like volleying me with really, really important questions. And I'm so glad that these are being brought up. And uh, I'd really like to try to do as much justice as I can to them. But I, I just want to put a disclaimer that these are all very, very deep conversations and we're just touching upon uh, the possibilities of what we're looking at. Uh, what you're really talking about is my relationship with privilege and the part social media is playing to constantly challenge my relationship with privilege. Because what it does is it always shows us there's somebody else who is worse off and also shows us somebody else who's better off. So I keep feeling like this pendulum yo-yoing between these people and not knowing where I have a space. This is time when we need to cut that noise off and notice, but where am I? And what is my island looking like? Remember, this is times of uncertainty where instead of it being a flat ground that we're all on, we're all on these small chopped up pieces of icebergs and each of our islands is looking different and wobbling differently. And if I'm going to take focus away from 
a tension where I need to stand into somebody else's. I'm in no position to help myself, let alone help them. So just like on an aeroplane, even if you're a mother and the oxygen mask falls, you first put yours on. You don't take care of your child. You don't take care of that uncle who's been using a pump so is asthmatic and possibly needs more help than you do. It's not about a comparative. It's about getting steady ground so you can help and support. Otherwise, you're going to be that classic superhero story where everybody is jumping to catch somebody, but nobody has managed to catch anybody and everyone's come crashing down. You don't want to be there. So every time you see stories of more and less, Try to tune those noises out and remind yourself, this is when I focus on my iceberg. This is when I make myself steady. Not because I'm selfish, because I'm being sensible. Because when I take care of this, maybe I'll be able to find an or, um, what, what are those called? An or to, to take my iceberg to someone else and then join our icebergs, bring them on board, but I can do nothing if I'm not taking care of myself. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So um, as much as we would love to take all questions, we'll just take two more questions. Um, so we'll take Ioniza and Yaki Paramban. If, sorry if I misspell, uh, mispronounce your name, but yeah. So Ioniza, if you want to go ahead. Is she not being able to unmute? Karthik, maybe you can ask someone else while I don't see her online anymore. All right. So, um, Yaki Paramban, if you can go ahead with your question. Actually, uh, ma'am, since if they're not being able to respond, we'll just read out their question. So um, Yaki Paramban asked how to be active in this situation of COVID-19. Yeah. And again, I'm going to say, let's look at the list that you guys have already shared because you have already shown wonderful ways in which you are finding activity and ways to employ yourself gainfully and meaningfully. So, yeah, you already are active. Thank you, ma'am. And the last question of today is from Ayo Nisa. So I'll just read out her question. Yeah. What do we do when we feel lost and overwhelmed? Do that exercise of un unpacking hope. And uh, sometimes lost and overwhelmed is just about I need to take a nap, eat Maggie read a book that I love, watch some TV. But always remember that it's it's a passing visitor. It visits, but it will also go. And then we move on to the next stage, whatever it is that's coming our way. So not to look at lost and hopeless as this all-encompassing and constantly being there feeling, but just to see the transient nature of it. It's going to come, it's going to go. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But again, going back to our slides, it makes that possible. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's all the questions I think we'll be taking for today's session. Hope this was a great learning experience for everybody present here. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Thank you all for having me. I think it's been a wonderfully rousing discussion for me to hear the questions you'll have shared and to hear all the things that you all have shared to the exercise I have presented. Uh, before we go, can we all just turn out our cameras really quick so we can take a picture? Oh yeah. If you all don't mind, really quickly. Let's see the faces. Almost there. That's great.
Thank you so much, everyone. Thank I you. I hope this was helpful. Thank you, Mega. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Hi. Stay safe, everyone. Stay hopeful. Stay Thank happy. Thank you, everyone. Absolutely. Carrying you know, hope. Parent, may I just say something when we just do not? I'm Abhay and Abha's mother. Yes. I love this session. Thank you so much. I think it was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, I really want to thank you all. I think it was fantastic. Thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think everybody can um, log off now. We're done with the session. Thank you so all much. Right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for giving us your time.